EBT card food stamp recipients ransack Walmart stores. Stealing carts full of food during federal computer glitch. A story by Mike Adams of Natural News. On October 14, 2013. When the federal EBT food stamp system suffered a critical failure on Saturday, local retailers were disconnected from the federal food stamp database that keeps track of how much credit is left on each individual EBT card. Seizing the opportunity provided by the glitch, EBT card holders in Louisiana ransacked their local Walmart stores, stuffing their shopping carts full of groceries and paying for them with near empty EBT cards that essentially had unlimited account balances because all accounting was offline. When the EBT database came back online and card purchase limits were suddenly restored, EBT card holders abandoned their full carts and just walked away, probably myth that they missed out on participating in the felony theft of groceries. This happened at Walmart stores in Springhill and Mansfield, LA. As local news station KSLA reports, shelves in Walmart stores in Springhill and Mansfield, LA were reportedly cleared Saturday night when the stores allowed purchases on EBT cards even though they were not showing limits. The chaos that followed ultimately required intervention from local police and left behind numerous carts filled to overflowing, apparently abandoned when the glitch spurred shopping frenzy ended. The story goes on to report that one woman who racked up $700 worth of groceries at only 49 cents on her card. That's $699.51 in theft. But that's the mindset of many, but not all, EBT card holders. You see, it's all about how much they can get away with stealing without getting caught. As it is virtually impossible to retrieve all these stolen items from EBT card holders, these losses are going to have to be absorbed by either Walmart or the federal government. In either case, other people must burden the cost of the theft. For the record, not everyone on EBT cards is a social parasite. Some are truly hard-working moms and dads and others who really need a short-term safety net, and I'm for supporting those who need a helping hand to get back on their feet. If someone is working, trying to make ends meet and need some short-term assistance, we must have the compassion to help them. But far too many people today are simply unwilling to work, and their entire economic plan is to suck off the system and collect as much as they can off everyone else, while refusing to contribute to society themselves. That's the mindset of a great many EBT cardholders who engage in widespread abuse and fraud. Some even sell their EBT cards to crooked shop owners who pay them cash. That cash is often used to buy crack or other street drugs. This is now what characterizes the EBT program in America, massive fraud and abuse. An important lesson in the twisted morality of those who engage in proxy theft of food and money. In analyzing this behavior, what I'm about to share with you here is usually important for anyone who wants to survive the coming social chaos and urban death traps that will unfold when a real crisis hits. Please help me get this story posted at Sarvival.com, Dalepal.com and other liberty slash preparedness sites where it may be of use. Here's the life or death lesson in all this. Most people who live off the government have no concept of private property. They literally do not believe that stealing large quantities of food from someone else is morally wrong. In fact, they believe that Y-O-U-R stored food actually belongs to T-H-E-M because they are entitled to live off you like parasites. This is the only life they know, and this is how they are born, raised and trained by the Democrats to remain wholly subservient to the government for their entire lives. As proof of this, read some of the comments posted on this article. You will find, in astonishment, that nearly all the comments are from people who say there is nothing wrong from stealing food from Walmart because it's a rich corporation. Instead of condemning the people stealing shopping carts full of food from Walmart, they are condemning me for daring to write about this issue. Apparently, I am bad for opposing the theft of food. In fact, according to some comments, I am engaged in a hate crime for even pointing out that stealing food is wrong. These comments demonstrate exactly my point. We now live in a society that's so pathetic and so twisted in its moral code that the ransacking of a retailer by EBT cardholders is considered morally justifiable. Anyone who opposes it is accused of spewing hate crimes. Don't put much weight into those attacking this story, by the way. Many of them are the very same people who will not survive the coming federal financial default. In their denial of reality, they can only resort to lashing out against those who are trying to save them by alerting them to the truth. How will the federal government reach the state of default? The reversal of morals and ethics is precisely what drives the acceleration of the welfare state into ever larger handouts for the demanding masses until the whole system reaches a point of unsustainable default. Once individual morality is gone, the morality of the nation quickly falls. 
And today, we are witnessing a wholesale reversal of morals in the minds of individual EDT recipients. As this small EDT card glitch clearly demonstrates, if given half a chance, many EDT card holders will immediately engage in the mass looting of food and supplies as long as they can get away with it. This was not one or two isolated people, this involved masses of people who spontaneously transformed into a rampaging mob of looting maniacs that ransacked a private business and caused huge losses in stolen goods and displaced inventory. To clarify, I am not saying that all EDT card holders are one trigger away from slipping into a raging mob of looters. But many of them are. Food stamps are just a safe way for them to mug you indirectly through the proxy theft of government. Every paycheck you earn is already being looted against your will, and a significant portion of that money is going to pay for the benefits of many people who flat out refuse to work or to take any responsibility for their own lives. Why does any of this matter? Because this is exactly the same way these people will behave when the federal government goes into default and nearly 50 million EBT cards stop working nationwide. 50 million. Consider that for a moment. Most of those 50 million people live in high-density cities. Many are proud owners of Obama phones, Obama food stamps, Obama unemployment checks and Obama subsidized housing. They have absolutely no clue that the government upon which they wholly depend to put food on the table is teetering on the verge of permanent collapse. Seriously, they cannot conceive of the idea of government running out of money because they do not understand where money comes from. Because of this distorted belief, they do not prepare for any future events other than more Obama handouts. Their entire preparedness plan is to vote for Democrats, because that's who they know will give them the most handouts. And they will always win the popular vote, too, because any politician promising to restore responsible fiscal spending to the government by cutting programs will be viciously accused of being mean or involved in hating poor people. So the government handouts will only ratchet higher and higher, ensnaring more and more people until the entire system is unsustainable and collapses under its own weight. When that system of dependence fails, those who depend on it will panic in mere hours. As proof of this, consider the fact that this mass looting of Walmart stores happened in less than three hours after the Saturday EDT card glitch struck. Police had to be called in to prevent the situation from getting completely out of control, and it was offline for only part of one day. Now imagine what will happen when EDT cards go offline for 24, 48 or even 72 hours. And imagine it happening in every U.S. city simultaneously. When that scenario goes down, you are going to have a 50 million person EVT panic happening nationwide. The panic masses will quickly become mobs, and the mobs will, within 72 hours or so, become murderous gangs willing to do absolutely anything to get food. After all, YOUR food already belongs to THEM, so they are simply claiming their share of your collective stash. In their minds, their total lack of preparedness in no way means they have any less of a claim on your food. After all, they already have a claim on your income via taxes, redirected as entitlement programs, so why not your food, too? You probably already realize this, but any household or family in the path of these mobs will be utterly ransacked just like Walmart was on Saturday. Violence is inevitable. It goes without saying that violence will quickly erupt. Once EVT card holders realize the local police are wildly outnumbered, which they are in every large U.S. city, the guns will come out and hungry mobs will become armed gangs of violent looters going house to house, apartment to apartment, ransacking everything in sight, stealing jewelry, cash, food, guns and anything else they believe to be portable and valuable. How do I know this? Because I used to volunteer with a police department of a large U.S. city, and I've seen firsthand what happens to society when a local police presence is unavailable. Those few families who can protect themselves through the combustion assisted rapid acceleration of small, high-density projectiles directed at intended targets will be in a unique position to survive the onslaught of desperate murderous looters. The outcome of this crisis, in other words, will ultimately be determined by the laws of physics. Those who possess modern-day hardware that best harnesses the laws of physics to stop aggressors will obviously be far more likely to survive than those who do not. And no, I'm not referring to slingshots. Calling 9-11 will, of course, be utterly useless, as will being unarmed. To make matters worse, the federal government, if it still stands at all, will likely declare martial law and order the National Guard to go door-to-door, disarming responsible preppers and leaving them utterly defenseless against the violent mobs that return each night to continue looting those left defenseless by the government. This is exactly what happened in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy.